For posting our own services, it's great because it gives us total control and customization options. Plus, our data stays private and secure on our own servers, which is a huge plus in today's world. To make things easier, nowadays we have technologies like Docker, which I already show you in my local AI with Ulama video. Docker simplifies the complex installation process by containers and applications, making them easier to deploy and manage. And it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. However, one of the challenges that remain is having to remember IP addresses and ports to access our own services. Plus, this only gives us access to plain HTTP. And for security reasons, browsers don't allow services running on HTTP to access things like microphones or cameras. For example, in Home Assistant, you can't use your microphone with assist over HTTP. Other services like Bitwarden won't even let you log in. So today, I'm going to show you how you can use any domain on your local network to reach your local services, like this, including HTTPS access. All of this using Docker, Nginx, Adder Home, and one script I created to manage everything. Well, most of it. And if you're ready, let's go! To get this working, first you need a working Docker installation. You can go to this video where I show you how you can get it working for Windows and Linux in just 4 minutes. If you're using Windows, you might want to check my WSL ports script, which will manage Windows firewall permissions automatically. You need these ports to be accessible. Once you have Docker configured, to make this easier, I created a script that will help you automate most of the process, so you can just use it when you need it. To get it, you can just copy and paste these commands into the WSL or Linux terminal to download the script into the SSL and Nginx folder. Now just paste it, and then hit enter. Now to use it, just copy and paste this command to the terminal. Execute it without any argument to get the usage instructions. The first one will take care of the configuration of Nginx and or at your home. For this, just add setup at the end and execute it. First, it will check if the Nginx config file exists. If it is, it will ask you if you want to override it with the default values. I added this so you can play around with the configuration if you want, and always have a way to go back to the default values if you need. Now, to use this, we will need Adder Home configured as our DNS server. You can use the script to install it, or just use the Home Assistant add-on. Check out my Adder Home video if you want to know how to do it. If you're in Linux, it will ask you if you want to configure Adder Home plus NGNX, or just NGNX. If you're in Windows, it will directly install NGNX only. But if you need to install Adder Home, it will give you a PowerShell command that you can use to install it later. Then it will start Docker and pull the latest versions of the services we're using. If you selected Adder Home plus NGNX, it will check if the port 53 needed for Adder Home is being used by Systemd Resolve. To check this, it will ask for your password. This is needed to get the permissions to see if another process is using the port 53 and to apply the necessary changes to disable it if needed. After that, it will start the services using Docker and open the browser on the Adder home page to start the configuration. If you are using Windows, it will start in Linux and will give you a command that you can use to install Adder home. For this, just select it and then right click on the terminal. Then look for PowerShell. Right click on it and click on Open as Administrator. Then just paste the code and press Enter. Once it's finished, it will automatically open the Adder home page for you to start the configuration. Here, just click on Get Started, change the port to 82 so it doesn't collide with the NGNX configuration. Then scroll down and click on Next. Here, we need to create a username and password. Then click on Next. Here, just scroll down and click on Next. And finally, click on Open Dashboard. That's it. Now, just enter your username and password. Now, to use it, you want to set the DNS on your main router to point to your Adler Home server IP address. This process is different for each router, so you'll have to look for specific instructions for the router that you're using. Also, make sure the computer running Adler Home stays always on. Now, if you don't have access to the main router, you can manually set the DNS on each device you want to use. This is really simple. On Windows, just right-click on the Ethernet icon on the navigation bar and click on Network and Internet Settings. Then click on Ethernet. Here, look for DNS Server Assignment and click on Edit. From the drop-down, select Manual, activate IPv4, and on Preferred DNS, enter the IP address of your other home. 
since this is installed on this computer, I am going to use my IPv4 address. And then just click on save. On Linux, it's something similar. Just go to the settings, go to network, here click on the gear icon of your network connection. Then go to IPv4. And here deactivate automatic DNS. And then just enter the IP address of your at your home. And then just click apply. And to activate the changes, you can just deactivate and reactivate the internet connection. And that's it. Now, until this point, we should have Nginx and at your home configured and working. Now, let's take a look at the configuration folder. To open it, just copy and paste this command into the terminal. Use this one if you're using Windows, and this one if you're using Linux. Here, inside the SSL Nginx folder, you'll find a Docker Compose file. This is the main configuration file for our Docker services. To make things more secure, we will be using the Nginx image provided by our sponsor, ChainGuard. They specialize in zero CVE image that are shipped only with minimal packages needed for the service to run, while making sure the included package stayed up to date with the latest vulnerability fixes available. But what does this mean for you? Well, a smaller and more secure Docker image. For example, check the security comparison of the official Nginx image and the ChainGuard version. This is a chart of the CVE report of the last 30 days for both images. To make sure this is accurate, let's see what results we get using another CVE scanner. This is the analysis of the official Nginx image using Trivi. And this is the analysis for the ChainGuard Nginx image. Now, if we take a look at the vulnerability details, this is the list of all packages with CVEs included in the last 30 days in the official Nginx image. Here, take a closer look at the libssl3 package with version 3.0.14. Now, let's take a look at the ChainGuard image. Here, you can see that it was using version 3.3 of the libssl3 package that contained a CVE with unknown severity. This was reported until October 18. And now, if we take a look at the latest ChainGuard Nginx image package contents, we can see that the latest image is being shipped with version 3.4 that has no CVE reported. This is how ChainGuard achieves its zero CVE image. Now, if we take a look at the sizes, you can see that the ChainGuard image is much smaller than the official one. This is because, as I mentioned, it only includes the essential package for the service to run. Now, for at your home, I decided to build my own image based on Wolfy, the base OS that ChainGuard uses to create their image. I won't bother you with the details here, but you can check the GitHub repo I created if you want to check how I built it. I added an automatic workflow that runs every day to check if there is a new version of Adgar Home to trigger a new build and push it to Docker Hub automatically, so the image will stay up to date with the latest release. If you want to know more, you should definitely check the Chengar Academy where you can find everything you need to learn how to start using ChainGuard Container Image to eliminate CVEs from the start. Thank you ChainGuard for sponsoring this video and allowing me to bring this to all of you. The second feature of the script will allow you to generate a self-signed SSL certificate and key for any domain you want to use. Plus, it will set up the Nginx reverse proxy configuration file and automatically restart the service. So you'll only need to add the DNS rewrite to add your home to start using your new URL. Since this is local only, you can use any domain you want. I'll be using my.smart.home. To use it, just execute the script and add first the domain that you want to use to access your service on your local network. And then the IP address, column, the port of the service you want to use. If it doesn't exist or if it has expired, the script will generate the necessary certificates. If not, it will show you the certificate's expiration date and ask you if you want to create a new one. This will let you update your certificates if needed. By default, the certificate is created for 10 years, so I don't think this is going to be a problem, but just in case. Now, go to your at your home dashboard, and here go to filters, DNS rewrites. And here, the easiest way so you don't have to create a new rewrite for each service 
will be to just create a wildcard DNS rewrite. What this is going to do is redirect all the subdomains of the domain you choose to use and point them to your NGNX server. So based on my example, I'm going to add a new DNS rewrite. Here I'm going to enter asterisk.smart.com and on IP address, I'm going to enter the IP address of my NGNX server. This is the PC where you're running the script. And then just click on save. And now if you go back to the terminal, you can just press Ctrl and click on the link in the terminal to open your new custom domain. Here, the first thing that you're going to see is a warning. Since we are using self-signed certificates that are not signed for a trusted certificate authority, our browser will alert us that our connection might not be private. But since in this case, we know that we can trust the certificates we created, we have two options. If you just click on advance and then continue, you can start using this web page on this browser without having to see the privacy screen again. But the connection will be marked as not secure. This doesn't mean that the connection is not being encrypted using our certificate. If you try to use any feature I mentioned, like for example, using microphone with assist in Home Assistant, you can see that everything works because the HTTPS connection is working. In this case, what this message means is that the certificate is not signed for a trusted certificate authority. If, for example, the certificate gets to be updated, the browser will detect it and it will show you a privacy screen again. So you don't have to worry if the certificate changes, the browser will let you know. Now, if you want to get the secure connection checked, we can manually add our certificate to the trusted list. For this, on Chrome, go to the URL. Then click on Not Secure. And here, click on Certificate Details. Here, click on Details. And then click Export. Now, just give it a name and then click on Save. Now, click on the X to close this window. Then go to Settings. Here, go to Privacy and Security. Scroll down and click on security. Here, scroll down and click on manage certificates. Then click on authorities. And here, click on import. Go to downloads. And if you don't see your certificate, just select all files. And now look for your certificate. Here, select trusty certificate for identifying websites and then click OK. And that's it. Now, if you go back to the website, click on Reload this page, you will see that the HTTPS is no longer crossed. But if you restart your browser and go to the domain again, you will see that now the connection is secure. You will need to manually add this certificate to each device that you want to use. So in my case, I will just ignore the not secure message on my local domains. But if it gives you peace of mind, you already know how to do it. Now, lastly, the default configuration should work for most services. But in case some services you want to use need some adjustments, you can find the configuration inside the NGNX folder. Here in the search folder, you'll find the certificates in case you want to use them in another computer. In the conf.d folder, you'll find a configuration file for each domain you configure. Here, just open the one that you want to edit. And you can tweak the configuration here. If you don't know where to start, just open Google and look for the name of your service plus Nginx configuration. And you'll probably find the necessary adjustments that you need to make to this file for it to work. Then just save it. And the third feature of the script is update. This will update the image to the latest version available and restart the service. So if you made a manual change to one of these configuration files and want to restart the service for it to pick up the new configuration, just execute the script and add update at the end. This will take care of everything. With this, you should be able to easily use any domain to access your local network services. If you want help with Home Assistant, you can book a one-hour meeting with me so we can take a closer look at your smart home and help you achieve the seamless automation experience based on your needs. So you can actually make your smart home help you achieve your goals. 
If you like my work, please consider becoming a member on Coffee or on Patreon. I call these amazing people. If you can't become a member, you can always donate whatever you like using the button on our website. And if you can't do that, don't worry. Just remember to give this video a like and share it with your friends. We truly appreciate all your support. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you for the next video. Bye!